Fighting with Paddle TV with yet another in-depth, unbiased gear review. And in this video, I'm testing out the new Jackson Kayak Rockstar 5. Now, whitewater kayaks, well, if you don't know much about whitewater kayaking and you think that, hey, a whitewater kayak is a whitewater kayak, well, this might change your mind very quickly. Look at the size of this thing. This is what you call a freestyle kayak, a play, a play boat. Now, whitewater kayaks are typically designed for either play boating, river running, or creek boating. Now that's simplifying it a lot, but those are your three primary types of whitewater kayaking. This is a play boat, which means it's designed to surf waves, to play with. And so the great thing about that is that in order to test this boat, I have to go play. But before I do, let me tell you a bit more about the Rockstar 5. The new Jackson Kayak Rockstar 5 has a retail price of $1,599 US dollars. It comes in three sizes, small, medium, and large, covering 100 to 240 pound paddlers. The version I'm testing, the large, has a length of 5 feet 11 inches. It's 27 and a half inches wide. It has a volume of 69 gallons, and it weighs 34 pounds. Its optimal paddler range is 180 to 240 pounds. In terms of features, it has double rails for carving. It has a flat hull for spinning. It's got Jackson Kayak's Bees Knees thigh hook system, their Sherlock back band system, and their Sweet Cheeks seat system. For your feet, it's got Jackson Kayak's foam foot block system. It also has something I really appreciate, which is the integrated GoPro mount on the bow. Well, it's hard to believe that my six foot two gangly frame fits into this little thing, <laughs> but it does. You know, I just spent a few minutes outfitting this thing, making sure it, it was comfortable, that I had control, it fit my hips, my butt, my feet. It's good to go. And so I'm good to go, it's time to play. had a fair amount of time to test this boat. In fact, I took two days to test this boat. I did a run down the river, and then I went for a play session at a local play wave, one of the best play waves in the world, push button. And I think that alone is a testament to this boat, you know, and uh, yep, I'm kind of delivering the punchline first. I had that much fun in this boat. I wanted to paddle it that much and not only the amount of time but really the past i'd say five years i spent a lot of my time whitewater paddling with one of my big goals being keeping my head dry i've done literally tens of thousands of rolls in my lifetime and so i don't really get the the same buzz out of doing more rolls these days in fact it's more an annoyance getting water up the nose the water in the ears, just everything associated with it is no longer attractive to me. But that was overridden when I was paddling this boat because I was having fun and I wanted to try new things. And so right out of the gate, I can tell you it did its job. It made me want to play and knocked 15 years off of my life for the hours that I was on the water. And, uh, and that's just a wonderful thing. But let me actually dive deeper like I always do and and really breaking down the good and the bad about the boat. And let's start, you know, portability isn't something you typically talk about with a whitewater kayak. Their whitewater kayaks are generally speaking quite portable because they're generally quite small compared to other kayaks, <laughs> but not generally as small as this kayak. Five feet 11, I am taller than this boat. This thing slides in the back of my pickup and I don't even have to put the tailgate down. It's light, 34 pounds that's great for a whitewater kayak. I mean, it's, there's a lot of plastic in a whitewater kayak because they have to make them durable. You know, anyway, I think that's all I have to say about portability. It's so, so easy to get this thing 
uh, around and to carry it. Let's jump right to performance. This is a playboat. It was designed for freestyle kayaking, surfing waves, playing around in holes. It does a fantastic job. It's an incredible playboat. It does flat water moves, it surfs a wave. You know what, that doesn't, doesn't even do it justice. I had so much fun front surfing this thing. The, the new double rail system it has on it makes this thing carve harder than I've ever been able to carve on a, in a kayak before. The hull is super loose, there's no doubt about that. It, it's fun on flat water. This thing is a high performance play machine, but it's also user friendly. It's, I feel like, someone once asked me, what's the best beginner kayak? What's the best whitewater kayak to learn in? And my there's no single kayak that does the job. And so my response was, whatever kayak lets you reach your goals the quickest. And if you're interested in play boating and surfing a wave, then you want to get a kayak that will let you surf your first wave the quickest. And that's exactly what this kayak does. You could, and people are going to be winning lots of world-class competitions in this boat, but a novice kayaker is also able to hop into this kayak, feel confident, and probably surf their first wave before they can in almost any other kayak. That's how user-friendly it is. And so that is a wonderful combination. Otherwise, I took it for a river run to see how it did. Okay, I took it for a river run because I wanted to go paddling. But I got, I, that gave me the opportunity to test it running whitewater and big whitewater. And generally speaking, freestyle kayaks, playboats are not good at running whitewater. They're short and slow. Uh, they're, they're just not designed to maneuver around rapids very well. They're designed for waves. And yeah, absolutely, that's the way it was, but it, it was still very user-friendly running the river in it. Perhaps that's because I'm just so comfortable with all the years I've spent in a, in a playboat, but, but I don't think it was just that. I think it's just a user-friendly boat across the board. No, it's not the best river runner, absolutely not, but it's not a terrible river running boat. Comfort. Now, Comfort is something that's near and dear to my heart, and it's one of the reasons that I stopped whitewater paddling as much um, many years ago. It's because, really, I had to squeeze myself to get the performance I wanted. I had to squeeze myself into small kayaks that were uncomfortable for a tall guy like me. And so I've been using a, a pretty big and lower performance whitewater kayak for quite some time because comfort was more important to me than performance, or at least the, the ultimate in performance. This one does marry the two. It has lots of knee room for me. Actually, I should take that back. It doesn't have, it has lots of knee room for me, but if I was any taller, I would really worry about knee room. This is the large, this is the largest of the rock stars, but and it's got lots of knee room for me, but if I was any taller, my knees would definitely be knocking up against the side. I think you would quickly, it would quickly go from a very comfortable boat to a very uncomfortable boat. I would say if you're much more than me, six foot two, 34 inch inseams, you're, it's a roll of the dice whether you're gonna be comfortable in this kayak. There's foot room. My feet were actually very comfortable in this thing. And I did have, there is room to play in there still but not a ton. So uh, once again, if you have big feet, I have size 10 feet. If you are a taller person, longer legs with bigger feet, you could quickly run out of room in this thing and be uncomfortable. But otherwise, that being said, if you're the right size, the new Knees Bees, I think that's what it's called, uh, thigh brace system, where you literally can customize where that extra support is around the thighs, awesome. Loved it, I had to play around with it to find what was right for me. I actually had to even move the, uh, move the pad around to make it fit right for me. Same with the, the, the knee, or sorry, the, the seat pad. This seat pad is absolutely awesome. It's inflatable and it's got a little foam balls in this thing. So when you sit and you blow it up, you sit in it and you let the air out and then those foam balls, the air comes out and the foam balls mold to your butt and it's, it, it's customized for every butt out there and it works. I loved it. I, once again, it took some playing around. It took some, you know, it took a little bit, but once it's dialed in, it's dialed in for you. The backband system, I don't really have anything special to say about the back 
band system. It works, it, it's solid. It's a solid back band um, system. It provided lots of lower back support. It locked me into the boat really nicely if I wanted to, which I did. I wanted to be locked in this boat to, to play around aggressively. But you also, you have full control with these straps at the knees. You can just pop it off and loosen the back band right off when you're getting out. Or if you just don't want it that tight, you can control how tight the back band is if you want to you know, be a bit looser in the boat so that you know when it's time to wet exit, you can get out in a second. Top marks for comfort, top marks for performance. Now let's talk about who this thing's for really quick. I think I've already laid that out pretty, pretty plainly. This is for a wide range of paddlers, really from a novice to the top level play boater, freestyle kayaker. It's a boat that provides confidence at any level. It's designed for surfing waves. It's designed for play boating and surfing waves and playing in holes. And it does a wonderful job for that at any skill level. But that has to be your focus. If you're gonna get a boat like this, you really, you, that's what you wanna do. Because as a river runner, even though it's very passable as, an, uh, as a river runner, there are river running boats that do a much better job of running rivers than this, than this boat does. And those boats do surf waves and holes very well as well. So if you're gonna be doing a lot more river running than play boating, you probably want to go for a river runner that is playful. But if you're gonna be, you, want, you enjoy playing the most, this is definitely a kayak that you should be considering. Value, you know, it's 1,500, 1,600 US dollars. Now, that's a lot of money for a small kayak, but that's what performance whitewater kayaks go for these days. In terms of value, that is the going rate, whether it's a Jackson kayak or whether it's one of the other top uh, brands of whitewater kayaks, you're basically gonna be paying right in that range. So it's hard to say it's not worth it because there's not a really another option. <laughs> the, the other option is if $1,600 is too much for you is, well, you're gonna have to wait wait about a year or so until some of these things come on the market second hand. Or you're gonna be have to be content in going back a generation uh, or two of this type of kayak or any type of kayak and once again, go to the second hand market. So there you have it, the full review of Jackson Kayak's new Rockstar 5. Yes, it was so fun that even I wanted to keep flipping. That's a true testament to a kayak's fun factor. I am going to be flushing my sinuses out for the next week because of this test that I did for you. So I hope you appreciate that. And if you do, well, one way you can show that appreciation is subscribe to Paddle TV if you haven't already. And also check out the new in4adventure.com website where you'll find all my gear reviews, all my tips, as well as a ton of other content for hiking and backpacking and everything outdoors. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon.